feels good to be back. But I got a promotion, so fuck you. Not always. Dream. Not always. But every once in a while. You gotta go you gotta go hit Mariah. <laughs> oh man. Hello, friends. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the F Word. Thank you for being patient for these last couple of weeks. It's been a uh, pretty interesting couple of weeks for a good chunk of us. Uh both from a um Busy, just scheduling thing. I know you guys had a big event that went down, and mm-hmm. then uh, some mm-hmm. major personal stuff, unfortunately, that have struck me and Vass again. As I said on the first deep dive, luckily it wasn't immediate, immediate family, but it was immediate enough family that it was like, well, we can't record it. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, so welcome to welcome back. Thanks for being patient once again. I hope you enjoyed the reposts. I know the first one, the directors one. I was listening to that audio, and I was like, oh. Oh, we have evolved. So mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. Because it was the first time I bought that preamp, that red one that we used to use, the oh, focus yeah. right, and it was in a basement, and then the basement was echoey as fuck, and I didn't know how to properly adjust the levels, so oh, yeah. it was real. I had them cranked real loud, and it was the one that I had to go in and splice out literally go through the two hours or so that it is Mm -hmm. and take out audio from each of the different ones eight hours of editing fuck and it still sounded like crap but not as bad as the other one because there was so much microphone bleeding happening plus the echo it was just outrageous and how old was that clip was that like 2018 that would have been i think 2018 that's not bad that was a while ago (laughs) but now obviously things are a little bit better except for your microphone now but it's okay how you guys doing I'm doing pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. honestly, yeah, no school started up. That's pretty much it. It's just yeah. been classic university lifestyle. Living that university lifestyle, y'all. Mm-hmm. I was there yesterday, actually, um, because I had a, no, yesterday, the day before, I had a rugby practice at the university. So we were in one of the gyms. Oh, indoor one. Yeah, it was uh, gym two. Okay. Yeah. How oh, have yeah. you been? Uh, busy. Ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> is, is that the end just of the sentence? Busy. busy. E- busy yeah no it's it's been uh i'm just trying to get back on track myself and on to the next one and events and blah 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 and work in that mix so are you starting back uh is your first job uh, not till yet? like start of april's best case scenario worst case is kind of which a standard is mid-april so pretty but, standard really but this part-time gig is not bad and you know it helps pay the bills and get to suit up I do get to suit up. Yeah, like the last time when you came in a suit and we all looked like a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually. Yes. Have you, I guess, I know you haven't, but have you seen Silicon Valley? No, I haven't. No. I finished it like in the week I was coding. So I finished it like last week. I'm rewatching it again because I didn't like the season, the series finale. And I just like usually watch shows back to back. Like the first Mm -hmm. time I see it. Mm Mm-hmm. Such a funny fucking show. I've heard nothing but like good honest to God, like the last. I didn't like this how the end of the series, but everything up to that, so mm-hmm. fucking good, so funny. Like, what, did it get canceled pretty abruptly? Realist, I don't know if it got or canceled, was it like, but like, I think they said they wanted to end it. Like they knew they were ending it on the sec- sixth season. Oh, okay, but like it just was like one of those How Much Your Mother endings where it was just like wasn't like a happy ending and people were just like sad. Yeah. Like, it wasn't awful to me. It was just like, oh, that's not like I didn't expect it at all. Was it a real ending though? Like, so I'm not a huge fan of the last little bit of How I Met Your Mother, but the ending was very real. Mm -hmm. And especially those last couple episodes, like there were some heartbreaking episodes, Mm -hmm. but it was some stuff that it's like, oh, this is what real life actually is. It's not, you know, the fantasy world that they were kind of living in in the 30s. So, yeah, like Silicon Valley, like the ending, because I was reading reviews and shit, and it was like the way they ended it, and it made sense to me, it's very much how Silicon Valley is. Like, you know, because in like, it's, I don't know if it's much of a spoiler, but like, it's not a happy ending. Like Silicon Valley is obviously like very tough fucking, I don't know, like, it's a very tough business and a very tough like place to be in. Silicon Valley is, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like one of those, it's a whole valley or city or I don't know where exactly it is in the world. San somewhere Francisco. In San Francisco. But like tech companies building their tech sure up. And obviously when people want to build companies, not all the time it's successful. 
So it's just like it was a realistic ending in a sense, but it just like I don't know. I just didn't care for it to be realistic. I kind of wanted to just be you know mm-hmm. a happy like funny because it was a comedy show. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's tough to end those ones. Like even I feel like New Girl. I'm actually choked that ended. Is it end? Because I remember I saw it all on Netflix. Did it just okay get canceled? Did it actually end? I have no idea, but. The way I, whatever I, episode I saw last, it just seemed like it ended abruptly. I'm like, come on, a little well, bit more. <laughs> it was, I don't know if you care. Do you care about New Girl? I was a huge fan of New Girl. I just, I just didn't Ca- catch up with was it. Was it like the kiss? Was that the en- last episode? I could be. Because, like, I'm not sure. Because I know, it, I just knew it ended, that's, but I'm not sure if that's my got thing. Canceled. I can't remember how it ended, but I remember I'm like, oh, that's it? Like, is there more coming? Like, and I haven't looked up since. And I'm just like I'm just remembering now for a comedy show that I really got into right away, mm-hmm. and just it ended like that. I'm like, ah, what happened? Unless those was it part of that Fox? Uh, I think cutoff. Like, I think a lot of like because a lot of those shows like New Girl, like a lot of that. I think it was on a station that was just canceling shows left and fucking right. I think so. That too. always just like gives a couple seasons and cancels it, cancels, cancels, cancels. And I think uh, that was, I think I looked into it and it did get canceled. Actually, I think it was such a strong show, and the episode that really like made me like it even more was that crossover with Brooklyn Nine Nine mm-hmm. and the fact that I saw that Brooklyn Nine Nine episode and then they've made mm-hmm. it part of New Girl. I'm like um, it was actually like a bigger part of New Girl than it was in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh heck oh yeah. This was like a cameo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah. was an actual like they were in the fucking episode. Oh yeah. I didn't actually see that one. Oh, Sweet. Yeah. So anyways yeah. Happens. I used to I watched it quite a bit. I think I stopped at season four for some reason. I think it only went to season five or six. <laughs> yeah so it didn't go. I wasn't too far off. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it though. Schmidt obviously is oh yeah fucking you always have one character that kind of just steals the show in a way, yeah. in his own, in their own essence, I guess you could say. Yeah, they they just they're, it's like the Barney Stinson character. Mm-hmm. But what I did like about New Girl is that it didn't lean into that as mm-hmm. How I Met Your Mother did. Right. So New Girl Schmidt was hilarious. He always had his one liners. He always yeah. was like that Barney Stinson style. But they still maintained mm-hmm. the story with Zoe Deschanel's character. Yeah. Whereas in How I Met Your Mother, unfortunately, it was like the Pirates of the Caribbean syndrome where mm-hmm. Barney is a side character but then they really made him the focus because they're like oh everyone loves him let's just circle it around him yeah but then yeah see like in Silicon Valley it was based on Richard Hendricks and like it was still like kind of the same like how your situation where it was the other group of characters but yeah. like over the course it was still kind of like there wasn't like some character that was obviously the main focus over like Richard Hendricks was the character name, not the actor. The, yeah, the actor was. Um, I forget he's a fucking. He's a good comedian actually. Like he's in a lot of oh shows. Oh my god, god. Ty uh, Miller, T.J. Yeah. Miller. No, no. T.J. Miller's Ehrlich Bachman, and he's the fucking greatest character on that show. Okay, I thought he was the main focus. No, uh, he's super. Didn't they funny. get him the fuck out of here because of yeah, some he got kicked out because he was very political. Thomas Middleditch. Yes. Okay, I don't know who that is. Yeah, he has a very recognizable face. It's this guy. Oh, got it. It's great. Oh, okay. No, he's he, been. He, but they also have. Uh, but he's kind of a goofball. Yeah, the Kum- <laughs> they have that one guy Kumal who's going to be in the right. And yes. then they have that guy who's Peter Parker's teacher the in guy. Homecoming. Yeah, 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 yeah. As fuck. yeah. But yeah, T.J. Miller. The one I told you this line in the retreat, but like one of my favorite lines, and I, I really want to use it in my conversation, like moving forward, is you know at least when Judas betrayed Jesus, he had the decency to kill himself afterwards. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Wow. Just, yeah, so many one liners that are just so <laughs> fucking funny. Uh, uh yeah, that guy that guy's been a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. actually, when I'm looking at it. Yeah. A lot of smaller parts, but he's just he usually been plays in kind it. of a loser or whatever. Yeah, like he's that's nothing. pretty much what he is in this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he makes the show in a way. Oh yeah. No. It's just, all the yeah. characters are so fucking funny. Like well, that's good. I'll get into it. I also plan on oh. seeing Impractical Jokers the movie this Sunday. I was oh. gonna buy tickets today, but it Is was, it a movie? It's a show, but they filmed the movie and now they're uh, releasing the movie okay. and it's like it's a one Netflix those, show. And it's a not Netflix a Netflix show, no? it's a true T V show. Okay. But it's on like half the season yeah, is yeah, on yeah. Netflix. So there's mm-hmm. like twenty four episodes. I think they only show like fourteen on Netflix, but oh, okay. it's a I fucking love it. I find it so funny. Hmm. I passed by it a couple times. I think I got the twenty two second trailer mm-hmm. or whatever that they put up. Yeah. Um I recently finished Hunters. How'd you like it? I'm conflicted. Okay. Um, On what level? <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you this. I, you know when you're so when something's happening and it's very serious, mm-hmm. and then someone, let's say, makes a joke, mm-hmm. and you have no other thing to tell them other than like, "Hey, dude, read the room." Yeah. I feel like this show is saying like does that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. It started off relatively strong mm-hmm. 
took a bit of time to get some stuff established. Mm -hmm. And then it had kind of that, um, it had this episode, I think it's seven, eight syndrome where it's like, you could have gotten rid of two episodes and made a tighter show because Mm -hmm. it dragged. Like I was in for the first five or six. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I'm, there's too many things going on. The walking dead effect. Maybe. Mind you, I'm not a, Except you know, seasons, I don't know not. much about it. <laughs> well, no, no the season's fucking filler in the walking dead. So yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was, I think it was good to a point, but then all of a sudden it would do something that you'd be like, dude, read the room. Mm-hmm. Like this is your own show. And it had a tough time juggling the tone. Yeah, that it like tones Mm -hmm. that it wanted Mm -hmm. to do. So at times it wanted to be super, super hardcore serious. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it wanted to be super funny. And it's like it's uh, an identity crisis. Basically, it it had a massive one. There was good stuff to it. And then it had a uh, obviously the twist. There is a twist Mm -hmm. towards the end or you kind of see it happening. It seemed like they tried to incorporate a twist in the middle, but it didn't work. And it almost is like, okay, they're going to go with this. And then all of a sudden they retracted it mm. for some reason. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Is it only one season? So far it's yeah. one season. It, they opened it up for a second Would season. Would you care to watch it again or is it like... I think so because of the way it ended. I totally think getcha. So. Like it ended in a in a in in an unrealistic but interesting way that works with the story. And um, yeah, essentially like for those who don't know, it's just a bunch of people hunting Nazis that are living in... 70s America. Oh, that's a sh- that actually looks really. That looks really interesting. I actually saw that on like. The you had no idea what he was talking about. Well, the whole no, time. I thought I was talking. About, I thought it was a different Netflix <laughs> it, it's show. Got, oh, it's got it's got Al Pacino no, no, no. and it's got Josh Radner. Okay, which fuck. Josh Mutton Radner? Chops. <laughs> yeah, Mutton Chops in the thing. In and thing. classic Schmosby. He's also the guy in there. You know when he does his like, sorry, bro, and he does that kind of voice or like, mm-hmm. yeah. hey man, I saw some stuff. Like he does his acting thing. Yeah, it's like that's his character the whole time, <laughs> and you're like. Oh man, like you're not you're Schmosby. Not, yeah. But it wasn't even classic Schmosby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of again, it, I think um a lot of it was just the fact that it just wasn't able to juggle the tones that it wanted to do. Okay. Some of the stuff was funny, but there are some fucking scenes in there cuz it does flashbacks of the Holocaust. Oh yeah. And it's like it's extremely well shot. Mm-hmm. and the costume design is insane and the actors that they had in these scenes are unbelievable one of the issues that they're having is one scene portrayed a human chessboard that didn't actually happen and a lot of people are saying this is kind of making a mockery of some pretty shitty things by because that didn't happen from mm-hmm. what i understand okay but one of the things that happened in there that i don't know if it happened in real life that they showed was very very difficult to watch and then all of a sudden it cut to something that was supposed to be funny and you're still processing how disturbing the thing before it was. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So is this based on, like, any true story? Because I know there were people that actually hunted Nazis, like, after World War II. So it says it's based on real events, but, mm-hmm. yeah. like, it's like loosely. loosely. Yeah. 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 The other it actors in there can, are good. You just but... assume loosely based. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. So any standout actors? Like, like was Pacino just, like, as Pacino as he could be kind of thing? or No. Okay. Uh, Pacino was actually quite toned down. All right. Um, I think he only had one scene where he was actually being Pacino yelling. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was good. It was just kind of calm and methodical, and he almost had his, a very Michael Corleone-esque type of vibe where, again, he's just he's, he can process things, and he mm-hmm. moves, and he's got a purpose and everything like that. You have your the Percy main Jackson kid, in there. <laughs> like, the main kid was fine. Yeah. Like, the, the one that we're really following where it kicks off because it's this kid that leads us to this group. Okay. And he was fine, but they made him too flip floppy, mm-hmm. and you're just like, pick a side, dude. Mm-hmm. And not only that, when he was picking a side, we didn't like. It's almost like okay, he did pick a side, but it seemed like they did it just because he had to, mm-hmm. as opposed to walking us through, walking us through a thought process that would that somebody would go through. Mm-hmm. A more like there are so many moments here where I'm like, there are some, uh, there are brilliant ways that you can introduce some extremely moral or immoral thoughts that somebody would be fighting with mm-hmm. for what's going on. And I don't think they did that very well. But gotcha. Anyways, yeah. I would say it's like a six. Because mm-hmm. there are some good performances in here. Mm-hmm. Um the those Holocaust scenes that they have are br- 
brutal. Like the actors that they mm-hmm. had playing those, wow. See, like as fucked up as it is, I'm very fascinated with the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. So probably after I finish Silicon Valley again, I will check that out because mm-hmm. like it seems interesting. Josh Radner, I'd love to see him in like a different role than just Schmoes because I know like he doesn't really do much anymore because he's been. That's his music. Like, that's his fucking character. People, yeah. everything he's in, he's just Schmoesby. But but it's music, and he's done theater stuff. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing I noticed. Like even rewatching How I Met Your Mother recently, um, he's very theatrical. Mm-hmm. Like he's very over the top, and it's almost like that's just ah, that's his style. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a Sonic review. If you guys want to do that, oh shit, yeah. yeah, do it. You said you loved it. So Sonic the Hedgehog. Fucking amazing! Like oh, no wow. word of a lie. I think I've all. I almost like I was tearing up five times because <laughs> I'm a huge Sonic fanboy. Right, yeah. And like there were some emotional scenes or whatever, but like I was just loving what I was seeing, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they didn't fuck this up because yeah, well. by no means was it a, wasn't an amazing movie. Like I don't know from a mm. film standpoint how it was because it was a kids movie, so like yeah, I'm not gonna critique it like that hard. But Sonic looked so fucking good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey was an amazing Eggman, Robotnik, and like. Uh, there is an end credit scene. Oh my god, I almost like splooged my pants with this end credit scene. Oh, it was fucking amazing. <laughs> like everything about it. Like I literally couldn't think of one negative thing. Like Sonic mm. just wasn't wasn't just some edgy character. Like yeah. he had a backstory, like he struggled with like loneliness and depression, like on yeah. Earth. Like it was a fucking there were some like deep fucking like thoughts of the character for a kid's movie, but it was just like honest to God, if you shit on his design Go watch this movie mm-hmm. because they fucking fixed him, and it was actually a decent movie. So I got to wonder from the beginning, the story must have been solid. It's literally just the One bad design, design choice could have fucked this whole – and it made – I think I just read – I don't know if it was yesterday or whatever, but yeah. it made $100 million so far at the box office. Fucking Sick. destroying birds so, of prey. So that paid for the redesign. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. And the, and but I, you know what? There was tweets from the creator that was like, he was like doing backflips on how happy like, he oh. was. Mm-hmm. And well deserved. Like I said, at the end of the day, it sounds like their story was solid to begin with, but mm-hmm. it was just a matter of the design and could people actually look past how shitty he was. Now, that being said, with the genie, not one thing got changed necessarily. Mm. And in the end, we just trust that it was going to come out correct. And, and turned out to it. be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. See, I really want them to release, like, on the DVD, like, a uh, cut where they just left in the original design. Because they have to have, like, at least half certain the main, done. main scenes. Yeah, like, just to yeah. see. But, like, I was looking at the old trailer. Because yeah. at first, I didn't really care for his design. I was like, whatever. Like, I get what they're going yeah. for. But Jesus Christ. I looked back. I'm like, thank God. Because he looks fucking awful in comparison. Like, he looks like classic Sonic. Like, his voice is amazing. Personality. Like, mm-hmm. Ben Schwartz, who was the guy in Parks and Rec, like, mm. yeah. was that guy. He, ben, for, yeah. Ralphie Macchio or whatever? Yeah. Ralph Macchio? No, Ralph Macchio is actually Ralph Macchio. Yeah. What's his fucking name? He had a weird Italian name. I don't know what his name is. No, Ralph uh, Macchio is a person. Yeah, he, he was a karate kid. <laughs> yeah, I realize that now. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> He did a great job, and I used to watch him on the Coach. human guy, the human counterpart to uh, Sonic? Ben Schwartz. No, played the human Sonic, but the human counterpart was actually really good. Like it was Is like that who you're talking about? Cyclops. No, Ben Schwartz plays Sonic. Oh, okay, like yeah, voice okay, acts yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, like he did an amazing. Yeah, yeah, job. I know who you're talking about. Okay. This is who you guys are trying to figure out. I got have no idea. I'm ben to... Schwartz. Okay, he's Sonic. He was in Parks and Rec. Yeah, but he was one of the. Sh- he was that shitty kid that mm-hmm. that whatever the fuck he was like that was uh, hanging out with um with Tom. Tom. Yeah. And then you're talking James Marsden, who was Cyclops. He was the human. He was Cyclops. Guy. Yeah, Holy shit, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. You did a really good job. Like honestly, like, the human. Like that's who you're talking about. No, I was no. talking uh, about Ben Schwartz. Uh, about but like Sonic playing himself. a different character in Parks and Rec. Ah, oh, okay. Like ah, uh, okay. The, now I you get hate it. him so much in Parks and Rec. Every I hated him so much. He was His so annoying. His sister was fucking worse. She was way worse. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was way worse. Yeah, I've heard nothing about good things about such a bad thing. Why did Birds of Prey not do well? Well, here's the thing. Even from my perspective, I know it all went down to marketing because I worked at the movie theater. I was going to go see 1917 with my friend. I'm like, hey, I saw it. Birds good. of Prey came out today. Let's just go see Birds of Prey because honestly, yeah. like 1917 will be there for a while. And this was in like Laser Ultra. So yeah. I'm like, let's just see Birds of Prey. And it was like it was a good film. Like it was OK. But like, I don't think anybody fucking knew it came out. Because again, like so weird. Even mm-hmm. I didn't know, and I was working at the theater, and like lots of people, like we're not selling any tickets for it, and See, now it's too I late because it got fucked. Uh, so I saw Birds of Prey, mm-hmm. and it was really good. After you did your review on mm-hmm. it, and I thought it was it was a fun movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Like obviously, Margot Robbie was great at it, and I don't know, the whole thing worked well together, hundred mm-hmm. percent in my opinion. 
uh, I didn't have really a bad thing to say about it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you had that the rah rah woman thing, but they also pointed out to that too. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of they made fun of it in a way, I guess. No, they were self aware of what so, was happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I again, I didn't see it. Yeah, I believe they're listening. Yeah. But. Now the other thing I saw, nineteen seventeen, as well this past mm-hmm. weekend. Great film, I know, I still and it wasn't. It. Uh, I he- I heard comments from people who watched Dunkirk. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a very slow war movie, whereas uh, this one actually, it rolled very nicely. There weren't too many leggy moments or anything like that. Like, it was very well done, I think. I like Dunkirk. I haven't seen I still, I still yet. haven't seen it because I had a chance at the theater when I just don't feel it could be better. Yeah. Or don't feel like it'd be good to watch at my house because it's one of those movies where, like, you the should war see it in theaters. Uh, it's not that bad. Huh. I need to go see a fucking. We movie. also, I'm, I want to see. There's so many movies I want to see at my theater now, mm. but we're playing Parasite for a bit. Oh, okay. nice. one show a day, and I really want to see that because, like, mm. let me know. I want to go see it too. I got one free ticket, so actually, I have two. I have a pass. So if you guys want to see it sometime this week, I will take you guys this mm. week. Yeah, yeah, leading up, like whatever this. Okay. I, cause I don't know how long it'll be in theaters in our yeah. theater for. Fair enough. Speaking of Parasite, I guess like it was a couple weeks ago, and you guys are probably Oscared out mm. from. I mean, and by Oscar out, I mean it's just passed and no one cares anymore. Yeah. But uh, since we weren't here, I guess that's and some catch up. Parasite wins everything. I think Disney was the only other one that did the four Oscar thing. That was the one yeah, that yeah. was coming up. So mm-hmm. it made his- literally made history since Disney. No one has ever sweeped like that. Mm-hmm. And I watched the whole thing. Did you guys watch it at all? I don't think no. 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 I watched it. It was it was good. And like Bong Jo Ho, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I said that correctly. What I didn't realize is that, yeah, Bong Joon Ho, Bong Joon Ho, he is so like, he's such a nice person. Like his speeches were so like, keep going, man. Mm-hmm. Like I want, like it was, and every single time he's like, I'm gonna go drinking, and then he wins another Oscar. I'm gonna go drinking, and then like, yeah, yeah. the person that was translating from the girl that was translating was just like, you know, obviously doing the translation. Apparently she has, I don't know anything about her backstory, but everyone's like, she's got a super interesting backstory. But hmm. I don't know, it just. Like and this guy's best director speech was unreal. Yeah, like yeah. I saw that speech and it was actually very like very was, humble, very nice. Like yeah. thanking all the other directors. Oh man! Like and it's not because he thanked them, but because like it's just it, you look at this guy and you're like, I want you to win everything now. He's like, just so people, genuine. It seemed like it is. And I did see that clip you're talking about because the the whole star power thing where they kind of blocked him out. They were shutting the lights on him and they and Tom Hanks and their little front row crew like made them all turn mm-hmm. the lights back on to let the guy finish i think right so yeah. that was so why did was, they turn off the lights was it just due to timing or like timing it was a timing thing. thing he was the, his, was, his was supposed to be the last one correct best film always is last yeah because he won best film yeah did so it, yeah yeah he did yeah so it's like yes, they always have it as last but here's the thing now with their whole no no host this also creates that kind of issue where it's just the best host okay see you later bye mm-hmm. but even then they they even when they had a host, people still had a limited time to say their stuff. Well, I'm not saying the timing part, but it's just it's more the of, host can actually come in. And the like, host can actually come in and say, "No, let's give him an opportunity," kind of thing or whatever. But anyways, it it worked out. It's fine. They gave him his his opportunity. At the end of the day, he got four opportunities to, <laughs> to thank mm-hmm. everyone too. But overall, to to sweep it like that, which is pretty crazy. See, I really want to see. I don't know anything about this movie, and I, that's how I plan to go. I see I don't it know either. I yeah, blind. But I know HBO is making a series for HBO Max off Parasite. They should. Really? And that okay. seems fucking interesting. I don't know. Hmm. I, I don't think they should just because it's like, let it just be. Well, I don't know how the film is. And I don't know, like, yeah. exactly. I think I know it's a horror film, I think, or a thriller of sense. Yeah, but, okay. Like, I don't know if it's, because I, I think it's a, like, kind of coronavirus thing where it's like a plague or whatever. Okay. So if you could just see it in like different parts of the world or whatever. Or a like, parasite, if you will. Well, I didn't want to say parasite. I'd be too on the nose. But like, <laughs> I, again, I have no idea if I'm totally off base or whatever because yeah. I genuinely know jack shit about this film other than the fact that it's all in like Korean, I think. Oh, yeah. You know what I didn't realize? And this was, this is one of my like, like a sleeper movie. Yeah. He directed Snowpiercer. And I oh, love yeah, yeah. Sm- Snowpiercer. I never watched it. I heard, it's oh, on Netflix, isn't man. it? I have no idea. I think it might still be on. Mm. I, and then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Snowpiercer is outstanding. Mm. Like, if, I don't know, it stars Chris Evans. Yeah, I know. And that. Tilda Swinton's in it and uh, John Hurt's in it. And it's just, it's so good. So, wait, can the director speak English then? Or no? I'm not sure. Because, I don't I'm know, like, maybe he can, like, translator. very broken. But, like, I guess for the like, acceptance award or whatever. They've, because if he's directing movies with, like, I guess Chris Evans, who 
speaks English, you yeah. assume that he'd yeah. kind of have to be able to communicate. He My has, guess is he, he's got people. That he's got his translator. Him. I'm sure he can communicate some things in some way, but to make a long speech and that kind of stuff, maybe that's where he mm-hmm. struggles, but whatever. It's But it's guys like that when you see them up there and, like, you just want him to win. Mm. And it's sweet that he's going to be, like, He's gonna get so many different jobs. He's gonna keep. I'm, I'm. I'm hoping he keeps doing what he's doing, and I hope he doesn't get sucked into a system where he loses mm-hmm. his thing. I hope he goes the Scorsese, the Tarantino route, where it's like, no, I'm making my movies. Yeah. Fuck all of y'all. I, these are my films. So I know you sent that one article of like I know like other people too were also bashing Parasite for winning the award because it was a foreign film, mm-hmm. and I know you were just kind of playing devil's advocate. Like, well, I was just like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, 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 I went back and I looked. Because I was like, okay, like, does does this person like it was just their own opinion? Because mm-hmm. the the article it was in the Hollywood Reporter of all places, mm-hmm. which is the most seems to me based on some articles that I've seen a very left leaning one. So to have somebody write an article about how well, you know, I kind of wanted Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because it is the Oscars, it's an American thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the other places usually award their films like the. The ones that are in France, let's say, are usually to French films and so on yeah, and so okay. forth. And I'm like, does, is this right? Like, I, I mean, it, it it doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. So I went back and looked into history. But it seems like the Academy Awards are just the Academy Awards. It's not mm-hmm. American movies. Oh, no, it's everything. Well, I thought about it yeah. as like the Olympics. We're like, yeah, in France, they'll award French films because like they want to award their yeah, own like, yeah, country's yeah, work. Yeah. But like for the Oscars, it's like... I guess I don't think any foreign film was good enough per se. I haven't seen them, but like I yeah. guess they didn't consider any foreign film good enough to be even nominated or to win. Yeah. So like this one, being the one that did win, was just yeah. like timing. All it sounded was like he wanted an American director, or American movie to win just for the sake of it being American. It had nothing to do with. It wasn't the, a race thing. It wasn't anything. Yeah, he just, he just preferred it to be a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because he loved that movie. Like the person, and that's fair. Just say that. It's like, oh, for me, I would have loved because yeah. I enjoyed it so much, and and just leave it at that. Yeah, an American director has nothing to do with it. Yeah, exactly. To I, I don't know. It was it, it was really interesting. I'm surprised they let it release. <laughs> um, yeah. So I didn't get more backlash. Like nobody really talked. Well, about that's it. the other one. And but again, Especially in today's going back age, into the, yeah, no kidding. Going back in the history of let's say the Oscars and looking at it, I mean, it did start in America, and it's always been about American films, and they've opened the doors to other places. Whereas other places, I still think they've they've opened the doors. Like I don't know the history about the Cannes Film Festival or whatever, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just yeah, it was interesting. It was more of a devil's advocate. I'm like, does this thing play? Like, does this thing check out? Right, but. Um, mm-hmm. Other things, Brad Pitt winning an Oscar, I was super happy about because that dude's freaking awesome in mm-hmm. my books. He had a great speech too. Yes, he did. Um, oh, was that the one? Was I don't know if this was Oscars. That was the Margot Robbie, like Margot Robbie's feet one, where he was thinking like that was a Screen Actors or BAFTA, one okay. of the two. Was he it? couldn't be at, but he was at the Oscars. Okay, so it was the one before maybe. Spike Lee's suit was dope as fuck. I he came out in a suit, and it was called like the the Lakers numbers, and it had twenty four, and oh. it was a suit fucking awesome hmm. um the in memoriam apparently like the luke perry thing people were saying that they missed some people but yeah. it's like there there's a committee that has to f- sift through these and they only have a certain amount of time and like there was tons just of just why they, they double up and triple up a few of them too like yeah they miss a lot um the young kid i was too. surprised with luke perry though because like oh i guess yeah, the other guy from jesse yeah but that I was surprised with Luke kid. Perry because, like, he was, like, a bigger one where people actually, like, were really <laughs> affected by it. Like, even on Riverdale, which I know is, like, a TV show, but he was in yeah. movies, too. But, like, yeah, but like you said, there's, there's probably times. a committee dedicated for the In Memoriam. You'd think they'd kind of not, not miss anything. Not probably. There is. I've got the article still here. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see. I don't know. Happening. It just seems like a goofy thing to forget. So this is, well, the, okay, this is what they said. The Academy receives hundreds of requests to include loved ones and industry colleagues in the Oscars in memoriam segment. An executive committee representing every branch considers the list and makes selections for the telecast based on limited available time. All the submissions are included on Oscar.com and will remain on the site throughout the year. Luke Perry and Cameron Boyce are remembered in the Oscar.com gallery. So it wasn't on the TV program Mm -hmm. that less and less people are seeing Mm -hmm. it's on the website and maybe they gave it to a screenwriter that passed away versus Luke Perry, like a screenwriter that's been in Hollywood his entire life back scene that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that person maybe deserves that spotlight more than Luke Perry. 
not saying that one person deserves more than the other, yeah. but we talked about this on the Kobe Bryant thing. There are some people that make a massive impact, and mm-hmm. based on that, I'm like, I get that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, that you're going to f- have a half an hour program, mm-hmm. and Billie Eilish is going to have to be singing 30 songs to get it through it. Um, I Honestly, I, the Oscar, the hostless Oscar thing was cool. I still enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like Chris Rock and Steve Martin's opening as much. I loved Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph. Those They'd, two together. Mm-hmm. If you get a chance, take a look at that that opening. It was outstanding. They, they do the year so before, right? Good. Well, the year before it was Kristen Wiig, I believe, okay. Amy Poehler, and Maya Rudolph. Oh, okay. And the three of them did really good. Mm-hmm. Fucking Maya Rudolph, man. Anything Maya Rudolph's in, like I love Kristen Wiig too, but anything Maya Rudolph's in is just good. Um, I got goosebumps and almost teared up when Eminem came on stage. Yeah. The way they led that, it was like they led into it. Yeah. I was like, fuck, yeah. Even though Scorsese could give yeah. a fuck. It looked like he was about to Oh, he's ready to fall asleep, yeah. Oh, man. I was so, like, it was so awesome. So I heard, what did Eminem actually do? Did he sing? Did he perform? Or did he, he just perform like, he... Lose Yourself? Because Lose Yourself, it was one of, I think it's the only or first rap mm-hmm. song to win an Oscar. Yeah. And he wasn't there. Like, I guess oh, he, yeah. like, mi- he didn't show up because he figured there's no chance in hell I'll win. Mm-hmm. And he ended up winning. And it was 18 years ago. Yeah. So it's also a promo because he just released his album. Yeah. He's been doing a lot more press, and it's good. Like mm-hmm. he he's out there. I mean, he's released three albums in the past year and a half. Correct? Yes. We passed. No, not year two. and a half. It's been year. like three. No, four years, dude. Kamikaze. Well, no, Kamikaze. Kamikaze, Kamikaze, Kamikaze revival came out twenty eighteen. Like my it? during my wedding. Okay, twenty eighteen. Yeah, it was well, almost two years two ago. Two I thought he didn't release anything twenty nineteen. Did he? No. no. Oh, well, my bad. Beginning of twenty twenty, he released. The only other thing, yeah. He he might have been on some features like he was on the Griselda album on and the, the Venom. Venom remix and Venom. Uh, he did the Venom, Venom thing, but that was part of Kamikaze. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Wow. The years are blending together. He did a really good interview with Crooked Eye. Who Crooked Eye was part of Slaughterhouse. Yeah. It was like it was awesome. I've only and seen snippets. I haven't seen the full. Thing. I watched. Yeah, I watched oh, the yeah. full thing. Um, and it's, you know, like the thing is, is I think now. When I'm watching this and I'm seeing like Marshall talk about other people he's a fan of, mm-hmm. this guy's a fan of hip hop. He talks oh, yeah. about it as a fan. Mm-hmm. He lives it as a fan and he works very hard as a fan of the thing. Mm-hmm. And it was, yeah, it was just a really good interview. Yeah, I saw some of the clips for like the shout outs and stuff like that. It made me go back and like listen to like Lucky You is still probably one of my favorites. Oh, really? Eh? Off uh, the Kamikaze album. I liked uh, Not Alike a lot. See? Not Alike. Isn't that? That was from Kamikaze. Yeah. We oh. are not alike. It's not yeah. alike us. Um, yeah. But it just reinforces how good his last album was and how he's like, he doesn't have to be pissed about his last album. He can just enjoy no. it. Uh, speaking of other albums, Royce the Five Nine released The Allegory on Friday, last Friday. Okay. Uh, really good album. It's an uh, interesting one to listen to because it talks about some very real things. Mm-hmm. He was on Sw- Big Boy, not Sway, Big Boy, and he yeah. was talking about how the allegory is based on a, I think it was a philosophical question if you're in a cave, and it has to do with, like, from what I remember this is this. You're in a cave, and you're looking behind you, and you're seeing shadows of people behind you, but you're not looking back, mm-hmm. and it's about perspective. And mm-hmm. so the whole album for him is about perspective. And at first, when I listened to it the first time, it felt like he was, like, really going hard on some quote unquote woke stuff. Mm-hmm. But for him woke I can understand like just he doesn't use it like other people use the woke stuff. Um he says some things in there that are like he's got like an anti vax thing in there, which I was super <laughs> surprised about. But one of his kids has autism from what I understand. Okay. So I think most of what I've read is that people are like we're against that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time not realizing that this kid has a has a kid with like when you when you're doing with that, my guess is there's a side of him that's just like, what if? Because mm-hmm. there's these anti-vax people, which I'm not an anti-vax person, no. but there's these people that believe this that this yeah. could cause this to your kid, and maybe it was just it was a line in there. It didn't. I, I didn't dwell on it too much, but mm-hmm. anyways, good album. And yeah, he produced it himself, wrote it, put it together. Like the guy did everything. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. nice. Uh, just so while we're on music, Eminem issued the Godzilla challenge. Yes. 
That's pretty huge. Is actually. that like who can do it faster? Who or can do fast? that that fast uh, verse, the fastest verse ever? Yeah. Now uh, it's it's record. Yeah, get us back record. So yeah. like he has people out there, and there's some really good contenders. Like people oh, do man. a really good job. There's so many talented people. Holy out there that can do crap! It's crazy. Well, I remember yeah. like the more I listen to Godzilla, like the first time I couldn't really like decipher the words, but like I was listening yeah. to today, and I'm like I could actually like. I couldn't understand what he's saying, but I could yeah. hear the individual words like in the thing. I'm like, okay, mm. he's actually saying things, not yeah. just going. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, is there anyone that's broken it yet, or no? It's not. A, I, I don't think he's he's he hasn't chose. He's the one who issued the challenge, actually mm-hmm. number one. And he's gonna get people to. He's gonna pick his favorite. And he's gonna pick his favorite right now. I think there's like there's a top twenty one that's been put out there, which is a significant amount mm-hmm. uh, that people have put. And I've listened to a few of them, and some have have the good rhythm behind it and everything. Uh, there's one I listened to that got the words correct, but like had no inflection in their mm. voice. They're just very monotone, just like focusing on getting the words out. So yeah. it's like, you've got to have the full package. So that's the difficult part, but there's a lot of people that do a good job. Well, and, and that's the difference between like memorizing something and actually knowing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of it, though, like even for me, if I were going to try to do it, I just try to memorize the words and I'd be thinking about the words instead of, already knowing the words and just saying them because mm-hmm. I know them on a fundamental level. Like I know them front to back, right? Yeah. Like somebody Marshall who wrote it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just cool because I've been, like I've said it, I'm a stan of his for years and years mm-hmm. and it's like, he's just seems to be enjoying himself. He said on Crook's thing where he's like, he's not happy. Someone asks like, are you happy? He's like, no, but that's just the way that he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he just seems to be enjoying this thing that he loves to do. Well, his past two albums have done like both really well. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, Revival. I think that was the one before Kamikaze. That's the one yeah, that, that everyone like, was shitting on, and I'll shit on it too. Like that was a terrible. See, album. as a whole album, it's not great, but I still like certain songs from it. And the one that Sheeran song I liked. Me too. Yeah. I haven't listened to any. I haven't listened to any song from that album since it came out. I listened to it once. I'm uh, like, this is not good. I understand everything. It just wasn't working. See, there's even songs now on. Uh, uh, songs to be murdered by, and I, or music to be murdered by, and I don't listen to all of them. I, no? I pick a few certain ones, and I'm good with that. The only one I don't care for is Stepdad. Mm. I will skip yeah. through Stepdad. See, and Stepdad actually has one of the better rhythms. It's the lyrics that are kind of eh, whatever. It it is. I no, I I kind of get it, but yeah. like musically, uh, maybe I musically, guess. I I like it. it. I don't mind it. It's yeah, lyrically, I could see where you have issues with it. It's like eh, whatever. It's yeah, it's just I don't know. The whole song for me is just like yeah, next. But it's the only one that I do it. Everything else, yeah. I will listen. Um, okay, we finally got the bat suit. Yeah, do we like it? Sexy. I like, I like it. it. I like it too. I th- I think it's kind of nice and era appropriate. Like you'd think it'd be kind of like pieced together, almost. Is it military or mercenary style? I guess military. you could say. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of like PC and like that, and it looks good. It's kind of like Arkham Knight. Yeah, it's like a lot. Like Ar- it's a mix between Arkham Knight and a Telltale game. Like it looks mm-hmm. t- okay. like Telltale is like the actual suit itself. Like mm-hmm. the photo, it looks so fucking. Nice. It's unique too. Like it's not like mm-hmm. any other suit you've seen on screen before, which is nice. Yeah. But- and the thing is, Robert Pattinson's a tall, slender individual with a big head. Yeah, the suit seems to be like it. It matches him. Like I don't know. Like, yeah, if they were so to this make is Telltale. It- Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. See if they would have, if they would have gone with something exactly like that, I don't think it would work because he's just a skinny mm-hmm. dude. Ben Affleck is a massive dude. He's got um, mass to him, and yeah, he's got mass, so that's why that suit worked. But to put Robert Pattinson in that, or even the Christian Bale suit, because yeah. like, Bale- that's the closest. Mm-hmm. See, Bale was kind of slender, but also kind of built. Keaton was the Keaton was probably fairly slender too at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I think it's, but you brought up, I think it was you or you, one of you said, like, it looked very Daredevil style because of the way. talking at the setup, like, the mask yeah. itself. Well, like, before, that was just the video, though. Yes. yes. We didn't see the yeah. horns. And I hated the mask when I first saw the video. Yeah. It looked, it looked exactly like Daredevil's. I'm like, this just looks bad. But seeing the photo, yeah. I'm like, okay, that looks good. Like, I can see the ears. I can see the whole, like, shape. It's not just, yeah. like. I think it was more how far the nose came down. It was kind of like a little bit further than what you've seen. I don't know why. Like, call it like a a couple centimeters more, Mm -hmm. and and that just kind of changes the whole look altogether. But I think it looks good. You? I I think if they released that teaser trailer or that suit trailer thing without the red, nobody would have compared it to Daredevil. I think seeing it with a red and black background like that and the way Mm -hmm. it was, very Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if they released it with something else, like a blue Mm -hmm. or something... 
you would have less of that. Yeah. Like, because that was that was my takeaway. I'm like, oh, it's just a color smoke. problem. <laughs> they should have had smoke, <laughs> smoke or something. Like he just hit a bat grenade or yeah. whatever, a smoke, one of his smoke bombs. Well, the one thing a lot of people were complaining about was that his logo, like the bat symbol, mm-hmm. they fucking hated the bat symbol, and I thought it was like so nice. I liked mm-hmm. it. It and looked like a batarang. Like the fact that there's Maybe rumors right now that it's like because in the comics he melts off he melts melts the metal yeah. of Joe Chill's gun and that's the one who kills his parents. Okay, like, and he puts it under his logo because like you know the gun that broke my heart will protect mine as I'm okay, like, yeah, shit yeah, like vigilantes. Yeah. So they're saying because it looks like a gun pe- parts they're saying that he broke the gun up, made that his logo and put it in his chest. I hope they. I do not. I they cannot. Okay, you don't like it. Show no 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 I don't oh. mind that. But they cannot show <laughs> Thomas and Martha Wayne dying again. <laughs> Martha! They can't do it. They've done it too much. They even fucking did it in the Joker movie. Yeah. And but I that was so hype. I was love that, that was my movie. favorite scene in the fucking movie. No, I, I didn't care for that part. I knew it was going to happen. Maybe it should all be like they, a you know Batman into do? the Batman <laughs> All they needed to do, the do same thing. <laughs> all they needed to do was have them go around the corner, cut away, hear the gunshot, and have them do the smile. They didn't need to show it again. Holly, like the people that make these movies mm-hmm. seem to have a hard on for killing these two people <laughs> and or making this fucking kid an orphan. So, like he already is. We already know this. We... Batman into the Batman verse. Make it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> leave them alone. They're already dead. <laughs> All right. Let's like, do this seriously. one more time. <laughs> uh, get the pearls, please. Uh, we need more pearls. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Speaking of Joker, I was super happy that it won. I, I'm super happy Joaquin won because I yeah. know we kind of jumped off the Oscar thing, but mm. uh, I'm so happy he won. But his speech was fucking weird. Like he lost you know. me at one point, but he brought it back. Like it was yeah. one of Renee Zellweger's speech was just like out of nowhere. But Joaquin's was like good, 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 okay, okay. What the? F-? And I was in a room with like eight of us. There was like eight or ten of us in this room because we we're doing a the we're following Oscar, along like, and doing our, yeah a poll, which I got like. 50%. Fuck, I did so bad. But it's like, you're losing me. You're losing me. You're losing me. You're talking about cow's milk. I don't get it. I don't get it. And But then he brought it back, and we're like, stuck the landing. Don't know how, but he stuck the landing. Did anyone at your Oscar pool be- uh, get guess correctly that Parasite would win Best Film? One person. Oh, nice. Was he like also no, like... No, wait. I got it. Oh, well, you did. Most of us did, and you know why? Because it was... Uh, yeah, we got now, was this most like... of it. Could you go as you went along, or you had to do it from the beginning? And Everything from the beginning. Every single Oscar. I would have thought so, you chose Joker. And I I did. Soph chose Joker, because Soph hadn't seen a bunch of these movies. Yeah. Mind you, neither did I, but she picked the ones that I didn't pick. So She's why like, did you pick Parasite, though? Was it just like a gut feeling? Because yeah. I, I know a lot of people didn't think it would win, and I myself didn't think it would win, because it's like... I, I had a feeling that it was going to win. Mm-hmm. I also... Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to win. Most of us had a feeling that it was going to win, even if it won foreign, but it didn't win foreign. If I don't remember, if I remember correctly, I don't know. Um, and I was like, no, this is going to win for sure. This is the one everyone's talking about. I know at work we were doing. I didn't do any bets, but like I saw at the betting pool, and it was for best animated film, and it was just Toy Story four and three other random animated films. Like, oh, I wonder which one will win this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I know um, that one wrong, you're stupid. The performances <laughs> were okay. Um. I feel very offended the fact that no Greek singer was represented <laughs> during the fucking Frozen song. So I want the Oscars that are Oscars not so Greek next year. I want some more Greek representation. How about uh, three Greek hosts that film a podcast in their priest basement? Oh. Yeah, that, that'll work. Um, yeah, I'm very upset at that. You mean Elsa didn't do a Kalamatino in the middle of the dance? No. What the and fuck? they had all this all this representation except Greeks. So you know what, Oscars? Now you got one more thing to fix on your list. And that's coming from us. Or just me. Hashtag cancelled. Cancelled. <laughs> um No, I I thought all the performances were pretty good. Um the Toy Story one was weird. I know it was nominated. I think they just need to cut out the uh, the performances, like the musical performances. They should have just had Eminem. Uh, that was it. I think I think they need to keep the performances. I think they need to be more selective. No, you can't, because either you have all the nominations or none of the nominations. Uh, no, you don't have. To. Eminem's wasn't a nomination. He was right. there. So I'm saying, just pick can, someone to be there. You can pick somebody else. You don't need to run through every single nominee's song. So did oh, yeah. so that, oh for best like 
music. They for, actually for went, best original oh, song. Oh, just do a snippet. Why the hell are you doing the whole song? They had they had yeah. the performers on there, and some of these were really good. Some of them were ah. Eh? Eminem's was the best, and there was no Greek people represented in the fucking Frozen song. So I'm really like upset. So about for this. Frozen too, do they like? Can I ask why they hung up on a bunch of different I cultures? Or are you just saying in general? I'm just saying. In <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I was like, what <laughs> the? I, I thought there was something. Culture, like, no, there, there, was like there, there was something, was something that, that I'm like, so uh, many that they missed. Oh I just figured God. because half the Oscars they spent shitting on the Oscars, which is really funny because the Oscars now has turned into that that like platform. That no, that one person that invites a bunch of people over to their house to criticize them, their kids, and the house. <laughs> and it's like, why are we inviting them? All they do is shit on us all the time. Like Gordon, Gordon, inviting Gordon Ramsay to your restaurant to eat food so you just don't do it yeah mm -hmm. yeah but more so that you're giving out awards and they're still shitting on you and they're finding reasons to shit on okay, you okay guys see you next year <laughs> yeah, you guys coming over right you guys want to come over and shit on me again i've got i got a brand new baby do you want to shit on my baby while with your golden statue Whoa. it's just like I wonder how long it's gonna keep going with the with the narrative that they have until it's just like Okay, we're on board one year. I think they Kay, need we're kind of yeah. not there. Okay, you guys keep going, keep going, keep going, and you Until guys the joke's dead. killed yeah. it. This is why I brought up the Greek thing, because everyone's going to complain about representation, and supposedly the Oscars are the heralds of representation. Oh, whatever. Why can't they be chill like the Golden Globes with Ricky Gervais? At Everyone the just helm. fucking drinks, has <laughs> Ricky Gervais shit on them, and it's fun. Everyone had a great time. Yeah. People weren't <laughs> shitting on the Golden Globes. They were shitting on each other, where mm -hmm. Ricky Gervais was. Why is everyone shitting on the Oscars? I don't know. Anyways. Pissed off teenagers. No, I don't know. Teenage angst. So that's why I brought that. Ah. Um, what else we have? The Candyman trailer came out. Have you guys? Have you seen the original Candyman? I haven't seen the original Candyman, the, Candyman the, but I saw the trailer. No. I haven't either, but I didn't realize there was a key. Uh, key? Uh, yeah, he's Jordan Peele. Peele. Jordan Peele. He's the yeah. um, producer. He also yes. produced Hunters. He didn't. I don't think he wrote or directed. Anything, no, he, yeah. But he's like a producer now. So yeah. does he do the TV show? Not to like go off this topic, but no. does he do the TV show like the what is it called? Fuck the one like the Mirror Zone or the Black Mirror? Mirror? Oh, Black, Twilight no, Zone. Twilight Zone. That's it. That I think is his new pet project. Is that a is good show? Zone. Is it like is that even out? It yet? was. It was like a huge show back in the I day. I want to check it out because I'm, I'm interested he's in He's bringing shows, it back. Know. Yes. Oh. I think he's already started though. Probably. Yes. But Candyman, it looked very interesting. I thought it, it looked, looked good. super interesting. Like, I have no idea what Candyman's about. The original say one his name, itself. Say his name three yeah. times and you're fucked. It's, it's kind of like a five. 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 You in think the trailer, it's Bloody Mary. Am I thinking Bloody Mary? Bloody Mary's another one. Same shit. Hold on. I found that one scene on the toilet super funny how the one girl just walks in in the middle and there's like, don't no one's stupid enough to say Candyman five times and cuts the white teenage girls. Either way, it's really oh, There's good. some ethnic ones there, too. Uh, there's one. In the back, <laughs> in the back. She's yeah. the one who said it. <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's one of those ones that, like, it's really, the first one apparently is, like, a, a classic. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, huh. I know the guy actually put, like, I remember posting this fact all the time for Halloween that he actually put live bees in his fucking mouth for yeah. that one scene. Mm -hmm. And that's why the bees are extinct. But it's meant to be a continuance. I think so. Because if the you the saw the trailer, the guy basically gets possessed by Candyman. Is that is how it Candyman. goes? Have you seen the original? I have not seen it's the original. Years. Does like, he get was possessed actually... by the Candyman? Or is it Candyman just like a Candyman guy Candyman is people? a thing, but I, again, I have to go back and see it. I can't speak too much of it because I don't remember much. I, I don't, can't remember it either. My guess is the original was exactly what it was. It was this entity and whatever, and then for whatever reason on this run, he decided to take over this person. So it's going make the him. shining route. Maybe, yeah. But it looks really Here's good. Here's Johnny. It looks very good. I think yeah. the Halloween sequel comes out this year too, like Halloween Kills. Probably. Oh, interesting. Didn't they just come out with one like two years ago. Was, I loved, loved it. I'm sorry. I loved that. The new I Halloween know. reboot was yes, actually really good. We know. Um, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Krasinski has said he's in for Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, that's fine. No shit. They're releasing an Office Kids book, and I really want to buy it. Yeah. It looks really cute. Office fans will buy anything though. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I don't have anything. The Office. The only thing I have. Soph bought me a "You Just Got Lit Up" mug from Suits, a show that I don't really care for, but I like the mug. Mm -hmm. And then I have my Ninja Turtles mug. Mm -hmm. So those are the two. Ones. I know even like teenagers, like kids my age, are like looking at the book. I want to buy the book. I'm like, okay. I would want to buy. I, I want to buy it from like, like it, looks, it looks cool, but it's like you'd know. buy it for yourself. Don't be. Of course I would. <laughs> That's what I would buy. I would buy five. <laughs> one for each of my goddaughters. One for myself. There you go. So I can read it to Soph and have her be super annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> Every night. I <laughs> wonder what they're going to replace that. That's what she said. Jokes. If they have it in there for a kid's book. Mm. Yeah, that's what she said. Is pretty PG. 
Is it though? I think so. Like, yeah, they don't know what it means. <laughs> lots of like I was saying after she said in grade four, like I don't know but what it yeah, meant. No, yeah, you didn't. It was just, it was just a random things like. Oh, that was hard. That's what she said. I don't know, like, the context but <laughs> behind the joke. I just oh, when you say were younger it. and yeah. you got older and it got clicked in? It got clicked in. Um, Doctor Strange loses its director. Yeah. Sam Raimi? No. Oh, wait, do we already talk about this? Yeah, well, this is the old news, I, I think. Old this news. is old news. No, it's, what the fuck am I saying? Like, Sam Raimi jumped on. Did he? Is that official? Because that's not a oh, official. Indiana Jones. Oh, there. Sorry. Spielberg. Spielberg leaving Indiana Jones. Very weird. But James Mangold. Yeah. Good director, though. <laughs> so he was on and then left? I guess so. Oh, okay. I haven't read too much on it. I just saw it, and I put it in the notes. Mm. And then I'm just thinking, I'm like, I wonder if James Menengold will go a complete Logan on this and just call the movie Indiana. <laughs> what, wouldn't it be just Jones, then? Maybe. But I think it might be Indiana Jones, because oh, maybe. What would it be? Or Junior. Oh, can you imagine if he just calls it Junior? That's it? So is there, are they continuing where like Shia LaBeouf was in the film? I think so. <laughs> oh my god, Shia! But he, I don't back. think he's going to be oh. in this one, but I do believe it's a continuance. Then there's something about Harrison Ford saying that it has to do as good as the Marvel movies or something like that. I thought that was. I'm weird. sorry, am I the only one that like? Like every Star Wars fan loves Harrison Ford, but Harrison Ford clearly hates Star Wars and their fans. He's old, man. But it's like even like even as he was like, I saw interviews like he always shit on. Yeah, he never really. I'm not really like saying I dislike him for that reason. It's just like why do people find him so likable when he clearly just hates Star Wars? Like Indiana Jones seems like he doesn't really shit on. Like he's saying like no one can replace me with Indiana Jones. Like he seems like he enjoys it. But Star Wars, it's probably due to getting asked questions for like. 50 fucking years which yeah. is you know understandable but like and everyone knowing him as Han Solo mm-hmm. not anything else yeah I can imagine when you're an, okay first of all he's Han Solo iconic character mm-hmm. Indiana Jones iconic character and we're not talking just iconic we're talking these are like he his two characters that he played are ingrained in the bedrock of Hollywood mm-hmm. and the trilogies the original Star Wars trilogy and the Indiana Jones trilogy are unparalleled in in the in their scope at that time, so he was it for both of them. Yeah. I mean, if you could say that if Darth Vader wasn't in Star Wars, not only would it not be very good, but he would have been the lead. Like, mm-hmm. but everyone loves him, mm-hmm. and Indiana Jones is still awesome. And except when they did Temple of Doom, that one was a bit of a slip up. But then they found out, oh wait a minute, they don't like us make like going after anybody else except for Nazis. Everyone loves Nazis. <laughs> Or sorry, Crystal was killing skull Nazis. Was like, or I don't know, was it like? Oh, Crystal Skull was terrible. Yeah, yeah really terrible. it was not good. I think that's the only one I remember seeing. So, and they could have been really good, especially when it was in the fifties and the Roswell shit was going on there. Like, I, there was an opportunity to make it yeah. better, but they did it. Um, speaking of badass dudes in one of some of their final movies, uh, James Bond, mm. uh, the No Time to Die song. It's awesome. so good. I was actually surprised. I didn't, I didn't listen to it, but I was just mm-hmm. like, I thought you guys were, I thought you for sure would shit on it because Billy Eilish. Like, I don't even he care. Likes, he loves Billy Eilish. You do? Dude, don't you remember I've he sent it? This. I'm a massive Billy Eilish fan. Yeah. I don't really care. For I didn't her. like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't care for her, the look she gave Eminem when he was performing. At that point, I'm like, Billy, you better get your mind right. That's his legend on stage because yeah. it didn't seem like she got what was going on. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm a huge, I, I, sorry. I am a fan. <laughs> I enjoy her music. I've listened to her. Like I've listened to her albums. Yeah. I think she's an extremely talented individual. Maybe it's because twelve year old girls like listen to her. That just makes me hate her. Because like, even at the retreat during karaoke, these two girls were singing "I'm a bad guy" and it got so sexual. It's like you guys are twelve. Like I don't want to be listening to this right now. Yeah. And then you listen to the lyrics. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. I, I don't like, think I've ever paid attention to the lyrics. No, I'm like, oh my I. god, what is this? <laughs> I figured out why I was going to talk about the Doctor Strange thing because the writer said, and Scott Derrickson, they never even got a, they never even got a callback, or the writer said he never even got a draft. He never got to write a draft for the sequel. So, sorry, that's why I had Doctor Strange news. <sighs> it wasn't that Scott Derrickson was leaving, which, by the way, he said he wants to do Con- uh, Constantine, and I think he'd be great to Ooh, do a Constantine. Movie. Like the John Constantine, like yeah, DC? yeah, yeah, DC. Like, I don't know, man, that Keanu one is pretty great. I'd like that a lot. <laughs> but was. if it's supposed to be MCU, then who knows? We'll see. So C. Robert Cargill was the writer, and it's he says this in a tweet, and this is a while ago, February 7th, but we're two weeks behind. Since it's coming up in the news stories, it's worth noting that Scott and I never had the opportunity to write a draft of Multiverse of Madness, so whatever they're working on now isn't derivative of our work. But he did say, I am, of course, very excited to see where they take Steven next. 
So yep. they clearly had some plans that they did not want to keep these guys on board for for cents. Seems I extreme. I got, at the end of the day, when they cited, it was ex- creative differences. So clearly they pitched their idea, but never got to actually put it on writing. I believe that creative differences, whenever they say that, is BS. There's some shit behind the screens. There is some drama. One person didn't like the other, and one person just decided, you know what? Fuck this, I'm out. And they threw the papers in the air, pens, everything, and they walked out the door. To play devil's advocate now, though, let's say these guys, they didn't get an opportunity to put anything to paper, but what they pitched wasn't necessarily the vision that everyone agreed upon, let's say. Let's say even Benedict didn't care for it, if he has any say in it. Maybe. But But they could have been the ones to say, well, if we're not doing our version, we're not doing it at all. And then they said, okay, see you later. Maybe. Just to play devil's advocate. Well, rumor has it, we talked about this before, that WandaVision leads into Doctor Strange 2. Mm -hmm. So maybe the way, because I know Doctor Strange 2 was announced before WandaVision, I think. Yeah. So maybe at the time they're working on it, they didn't really like, I don't know if, I guess they would have this shit together, Mm -hmm. but like it could be something to do with their story didn't align correctly with WandaVision's and they had to like readjust it and they just decided, let's just do it over. Yeah. Very much so. Um. We did have the Stranger Things 4 trailer mm-hmm. with Hopper. I never watched it. Big surprise. Um, it was. I'm surprised that really? it's in I this context. Surprised. No, I was, I was surprised that it was there. Mm. Like, I was expecting it to be in the Upside Down. Like, I was expecting Yeah, I don't know that. why he's in Russia. Unless, unless he came out from the other side and was in Russia. But, like, that's where leads I... Leads into yeah. Black Widow. That's why. <laughs> So he went through crossover. The, he went through the upside down to become Black Widow's dad. Yeah, <laughs> fuck exactly. Or adopted dad. The red or stripe the or whatever. Fuck. Yeah, the red guard. Red I guard. Think. That's it. Whatever. The he's red called. guard. Red stripe. I think. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Witcher two. Witcher season two begins production pretty quick. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. What else did I have here? Wasn't there a character? Oh list sent out yeah they've got um another eskel es- i think that's one guy uh they have a, a witcher on there uh, another witcher um that's gonna be a part of it which will be good more witchers is good because there are five schools of witchers i believe four or five um okay i know of this but i don't the konami code creator kazuhisa hashimoto dies at 61 this guy created the cheat code or just created a code? I think the cheat code. The one. Well, I would make the Konami code yeah. is like the code. Yeah. The down, down, yeah. left, right, left, right, BA. Uh, that's a big one. Yeah. What was that that's for? Like, what game was that for? <laughs> I remember from GTA. <laughs> yeah. Never know. GTA was left, down, right, up, left, down, right, up, left, down, down, down. Same thing. Or R1, R2, L1, R2. He didn't create that specific code. No, He's he talking about. He wrote the code from the original uh, yeah. Contra, I believe it was. Yeah. But anyways, what's the? Did you find it? The season two stuff. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're on research porn. detail. We should we should get an intern. We should just get like a man behind the camera, like a producer, just to talk. Sh- no, we just need a we need um, we're the producers. We just need somebody in the corner to get our facts straight, so we don't have to keep looking at our phones. This is an open call out. Our tour will fly out here every Thursday and what Friday. Yeah, that's where that's what our tour is going to do. Yeah. Maybe if we were hitting 100,000 listeners a week. Well, have even Skype 500 in. a week. Yeah, if we could set that up, that'd be sweet. I would actually, if we could Skype in, which I've, I've been on a, someone's podcast where we had someone Skype in from Vancouver, that was sweet. Well, I think I watched the H3 podcast on YouTube, like the highlights, and they have like their producer just Skypes in and they just have him like type shit up when they're talking. That's with Ethan Klein, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I never understood what's the hype around it. Like, I've seen his stuff. I like his show. I'm just saying, like, I don't, this guy came out of nowhere, and is it just he's been doing it for a long well, time? Well, H3, H3 was his channel, and what he did was basically he would punch his way up by bullying bigger YouTubers and, like, calling them out on their bullshit. Like, he'd make fun of prank channels, like, fake prank channels, shit like that. And then he just eventually got too big where he couldn't, like, bully people anymore because, like... He was it. Yeah, he'd have to punch it down. So I, they ended up making the podcast, and his wife, Gila made the clothing line teddy fresh and I actually bought some of it in saskatoon because i found it in canada and it's nice. actually so so hype but like now they just do the podcast because that's like they're just super successful at it and people like it it's good so like, yeah, he basically I, I just chirps to people. It. yeah okay I, I just wasn't sure where this guy came from because all of a sudden it's like he's everywhere mm-hmm. and by everywhere i mean like out when i started listening or watching youtube podcasts as opposed to just listening to them yeah. all the time 
just kept popping up with people that I like listening to. And I was like, oh, we sick. had Papa John's on it like t- a week ago, which was pretty funny. That's funny. Mm-hmm. That is funny. Did you end up finding it? Yeah. I'll like just the cast sure. season two. So it's Christopher Hivju. Has. Uh, Nivellen. Okay. And that he played. Uh, son of a bitch. Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't know. Torment? Torment, that's it. It's been a while. How would you forget? Lots. Messia Simpson as Francesca. Okay. Yasin Atur as Cohen. Okay. This guy. Tho Ersted Rasmussen as Eskel. Yeah, Eskel's interesting because he's another, like I said, another witcher. Aisha Fabian Ross as Lydia Van Bredevert. And Paul Bullion as Lambert. Oh, they're bringing Lambert. So Lambert's a shit talker. Eskel's all like both of them are like they kind of have come up in the ranks and mm. with Geralt in a way. And yeah. um, Lambert's actually really funny in uh, in the Witcher Three game. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That Rasmussen guy looks just like Eskel too. At least the side by side comparison. So have you guys seen this poster here? The Simpsons one. <laughs> no. no, what are they doing? So I thought it was a fan made poster because I saw it on Reddit, but this is actually. They're doing an MCU crossover with The Simpsons for an upcoming episode, like I guess parroting Endgame of sorts. And I think I think I read that the Russo brothers are actually like directing the episode. That's sweet. So I th- I think it comes out sometime in March. But like yeah, I don't know. It seems I thought it was a joke, but I don't watch The Simpsons, but I'll probably check that out because it sounds funny and fun yeah. to watch. I um yeah, I still love The Simpsons. I always wished Family Guy did a Marvel crossover. Who yeah. says they won't? Well, I don't know, because now they're not with Fox anymore, because they got sold somewhere else, I think. I guess we can, yeah. Which leads us into our next story. Oh. I guess our final story. Oh, sure. Um, the Bobs. Bob Iger gives oh, away yes. for Bobs. Oh, yeah. C- Cedric? Cedric? C- yeah. Whatever his name is. I'm going to find it again. I was so confused. Like, for like, the next three days, cause I was thinking that Kevin Foggy got replaced. I don't know why. It was just like, my. I don't know why I connected it that way. But I was like, that's so, like, why would they get rid of him now? Like, that's so weird. And I even mm. read the article itself, too, which is weird. I never actually, like, realized it wasn't Kevin Feige. But then yeah. three days later, I was looking back to the chat. I'm like, oh, wait, this isn't Kevin Feige. This is just a guy who ran Disney. I'm like, oh, that's whatever. Bigger than Kevin Feige. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and so Bob Chapek is the other guy. Okay. So. Bob for Bob. <laughs> Two Bobs don't make a right. <coughs> Sorry, I can't. I'm got a tick on my throat. So, super surprising. Mm-hmm. Like the guy, this guy is a big fucking deal. And he's just like, I don't know. I hope that there's no scandal chasing him. Did you, did you actually read the article? Yeah. He's stepping down to be still within Disney. Yeah. But other projects. Yeah. I know okay. that. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying he's at the top. Okay. So now they're putting on a new guy mm-hmm. who is higher than him mm-hmm. technically because he's stepping down. Which is interesting. After all of the stuff that he did, yeah, the, the Pixar acquisition, right down to the Fox acquisition, billions of dollars to make Disney as big as it is, mm-hmm. and then he's just like, Endgame came out. It's a year after Endgame, close to. I've done my work. Like, barring a blackmail deal <laughs> of mm-hmm. some type. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty badass way to do things. Well, maybe like, do you think he was pushed down? Because like, I know not to compare this was in Silicon Valley. Like, the CEO was pushed down by his board of directors to like go down to be whatever CTO because he yeah. couldn't like run it properly. Or he had a scandal of sorts, mm-hmm. and then a new boss came in to be the CEO. Um, so would it just be him s- stepping down, or would you think like he was forced to step down to a different role? I said unless there's a scandal, it's very strange that he's doing it, but it's still badass because. There is nobody on this planet that can say that Bob Iger has not been doing his job. Mm-hmm. He is he consolidated so much power. He has single handedly collected the infinity stones of our movie watching lives under Disney. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's the guy. Would you even want that job though? That seems very high pressure. Well for sure. Or there's a man behind the curtain scenario where Bob Iger will still basically run it, just won't have the title. Maybe. Like a Actually, what's funny is last week I watched both Vice mm. and I watched uh, Rocket Man. Mm. But Vice was funny because it was talking about how Dick Cheney was just like that quiet guy behind the scenes pulling yeah. the strings and no one saw him coming. So you not man behind the curtain. It's not the, maybe the correct. No, it'd be like a Dr. Oz type of thing. Yeah. But, like a puppet. But there's yeah. a there's a puppet and he's the puppeteer. Oh, it'd be the like in Iron Man 3 with the, man, the, uh, the, the, the Mandarin. Mandarin. 
Orange. I was going to say Mandalorian. Yeah. That's not right. <laughs> the Mandarin Orange. <laughs> the Mandarin Orange. Um, yeah, so he hmm. said, with the successful launch of Disney's direct-to-consumer businesses and the integration of 20th Century Fox well underway, I believe this is an optimal time to transition to a new CEO, Iger said. I have the utmost confidence in Bob and look forward to working closely with him over the next 22 months as he assumes this new role and delves deeper into Disney's multifaceted global business and operations while I continue to focus on the company's creative endeavors. I'm Bob, and I approve that message. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. All right, Bob. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Hello there, John. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> so this is, this is how uh, crazy, since 2005, okay? This is how he's defined his, his growth. 2006 acquisition of, of Pixar for 7.4 billion. Was it billion. in 2006? That was earlier. 2009 acquisition of Marvel for 4 billion. 2012 acquisition of Lucasfilm for 4.6 billion, which is crazy. I thought that had been higher. And 71.3 billion dollar acquisition for 21st Century Fox in 2019. Also saw the launch of Disney's direct consumer streaming service, obviously Disney Plus. He, with that Fox deal, he had Hulu stakes and all sorts of shit like that. I mean, when you think about it, gosh. he paid like pennies on the dollar for everything up until Fox. Fox mm-hmm. is probably the only thing he paid top dollar for. Everything else he got at a steal of a deal and what he's made them worth now. Well, Marvel specifically. Marvel Pixar specifically. Like, no, I would say Disney and Pixar. There was a, how many I years think did they almost go? Almost everything though, but you're telling me like he paid s- between under 10 million for any of those. And, and now they're the worth billions. like in the, or sorry, billion, sorry, under 10 billion for any of those. Yep. And now they're worth easily hundreds of millions. Well, yep. Star Wars, they like just started in 2015. So it's like, if you need a bit more time to like get the truth. Uh, yeah. Like, even oh, then, yeah. yeah. But I, I would say. That was the highest grossing yeah. film for a long time. Mm-hmm. Or not highest, but on one of the top yeah. ones. Yeah. Fox was their biggest acquisition that they paid top well, dollar think, yeah, for, for like an 50 billion just more said than 70, yeah, 71. 50 billion more than like the Lucas oh, film yeah, or whatever, yeah. or like no. 60. Lucas, Lucas was four point six billion. Oh this my was god! Seventy one. Thought Lucas 3. was twelve. No, no it's, like, it's like a sixty six or sixty seven billion Dude, dollar acquisition. Huge difference. But, sorry, difference. But that was just last year, twenty nineteen. Yeah, he and consolidated also, that. Also, I would say maybe I don't know why. I, that's I was surprised it was so low. Yeah, like I mean billion dollars, but Marvel wasn't worth much when he bought it. No, Pixar was worth a lot. But I would have figured like you're talking Star Wars property. Yeah. And then they that first one rolled out a billion dollar at the box office. Well, the prequels like, kind of fucked Star Wars' value. Oh yeah, a little bit. Maybe that was the case, right? Like they down. were their stock was down, and he bought it at a good punt time. And they had like TV shows going for them, like the like Clone Wars, but like that was pretty much yeah. it. Like Clone Wars wasn't a national fucking hit. It was just like and the, the fan base liked it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyways. So yeah. Hello, Bob. Hmm. Hello, Bob. I wonder if they're gonna have a big high five like Bob style. Hmm. I don't know what Maybe Bob they'll make each other. Maybe. But I guess hopefully the door just says Bob so they don't have to etch too many names into it. I'm pretty sure it has his full name in there, Bob Iger. I imagine. I'd hope yeah. so. If he's a CEO. I would just have Bob. Hey Bob, they're ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, so now um Disney's gonna keep on trucking. And um what else is there? I don't have anything else. I uh, I think that's it. The rest of the stuff is just uh, I had here, and I forgot what I will put them in for. Oh, that Parasite HBO series is starring Mark Ruffalo. Did you say that? Oh no, I, I just talked. About, I don't know who is starring. That's weird. Yeah. So it would be in English then. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought this was pretty interesting. Tell me the Knives Out thing about Ryan Johnson. Oh yes, actually that no was. villain can have can I have an iPhone. Yeah, it's like a little Apple rule. It's like what the heck? They can be the villains in real life, but not in the fucking movies. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't want to really lean into it too much. Let's it's also like for Ricky of your base. To it's do. also like why though? Like it's that's such a weird rule because even Ryan Johnson, like I couldn't say it before the movie came out because then it'd be like, oh. I don't think anyone's supposed to say it <laughs> at all. No, that's true. He all just right, it's it's, nice. it's an industry secret the fact that like and now you're gonna go back and you're look. I'm like, oh yeah, he doesn't have an iPhone. Did anyone in Knives Out even have an iPhone though? Because I know like Marta had a Samsung. I think, but that's what was, well probably they all had Android. Mm-hmm. Whether it be Google, that kind of seems like H. a stupid decision on like Apple's part, though, because now that the secret's out, no one's gonna want to use an iPhone if it's like a murder mystery, or even like yeah. Yeah. if you're trying to like have like a Marvel character to do a back turn. I don't like, think anyone even noticed, but now that it's been said, that's mm-hmm. all people are gonna notice, guaranteed. 
Speaking of notice, I uh, should probably clarify. I should probably bring to light the fact that I was wrong on the Han killing. This had nothing to do with Knives Out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because after that, you sent me that side-by-side comparison of what happened. Mm -hmm. And I guess it turns out a car did randomly show up out of the fucking blue to tag him. And in the Tokyo Drift world, it was a random car because they were speeding through the town. But in Fast and Furious 7 world, it was Jason Statham behind the wheel of whatever the fuck he was driving. And not so random. And well, No. <laughs> the, the fact that he was drifting at that speed, he just happened to hit him perfectly. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Is that really what you're I was wrong. Fast and Furious? That logic that he... You guys jumped off a bridge. No, I know. Catapulted, no. swung know. peacefully like Spider-Man. I'm just, I'm just bringing up the fact that I was wrong. Yeah. And Vasily pointed it out. And then we had the two-week hiatus. And now I can clarify that I know that I was wrong. And the FBI agent on my phone graciously gave me this little tidbit that <laughs> I could send. Yep, it's true. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hopefully... You'd think with all this stuff that we talk about in the show, our phones would be a little bit smarter by giving us more information. I don't know. We do yeah, right. I keep having to search over the shit myself. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, that's it. Could be a producer, just send us all the information. Yeah, too. Like I said, we need a guy and we got a, we need guy, a guy, need a guy in a chair. Yeah. yeah, that's what we need. Um, okay, that's all I got. Mm. Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, uh, but I'll say this after. That's it. That's it. Sorry, I didn't. We're gonna do the SAS podcast tonight. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm going to. I just. I, I, that's it. Hold on. I'm having a real tough time finishing this shit right now. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's done. We're done. We're done. It's over. All you right. can find me on Twitter at the efforts G. You can email us at the effort podcast at gmail.com. Uh, share these episodes with your friends, please. If you're enjoying the show, we really hope that you're letting people know about it so that they can enjoy the show. Um, I don't think I ever really asked that too much or ever, but uh, yeah, just a little, I guess, call to action of sorts. Um, can and we then, see the love people? Yeah, and then uh, if you can or do have the time to rate it, I would love. We would love a rating. I think on Apple is a good one, but anywhere you listen to, likes, comments, all that stuff would be great. And uh, you can find us on Instagram too, F Word Podcast, Facebook. You can find us on there at the same thing. You can go to the Saskatchewan Podcast Network and find us there uh, among other uh, podcasts. And that website and the whole network itself is brought to you by Connexus credit union hashtag money talk go to whatever money talk dot <laughs> ca oh, say something i don't know it was just said i'm g oh i thought you said i thought you meant <laughs> i'm good <laughs> i'm anthony <laughs> and i'm vast and we're out. No, you're just supposed to say I'm vast, not and I'm vast, because then I have to say and we're out. That's that's too. Hard.